G'day folks, and welcome back for part two of my Primal Strike Elementalist playthrough. Um, we are still in Act 1, and we've got a few quests to turn in, so I'm going to go and do that before we get too much into this. Now, this episode is likely to be the end of Act 1. Well, it's, it's pretty much guaranteed to be the end of Act 1. Um, and also, depending on how we do for time, I'm going to try and get the weapon farmed up as well. Um, I've done that on a few of my other characters, and actually there's a really easy way to do it, and I'll show you that when we get to it, but um, I have seen a lot of people saying that they're having issues getting the uh, the weapon for this build, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, there's a nice easy place to get it, and uh, we're going to do that. However, uh, let's just... where are we? So I've already got the Shambler's Heart. Uh, if I hadn't already got that, if I'd turned this quest in earlier, I probably would use the Sister's Amulet. Uh, the regen on this is quite good. And uh, this build is kind of going all in on regen. We'll be getting a little bit of lifesteal, but uh, it is going to have a heavy focus on regen, as well as some healing procs as we, uh, as we level up. For those of you who've watched the channel a fair bit, uh, you're probably expecting me to talk about the um, Zarya's Amulet of the Grove right about now, uh, but we're not doing that. If I get one, great, but I'm I'm not farming that. By the time you can get to the point where you could farm it, uh, you'll be level sort of high 30s, maybe even 40. And uh, the, the suffix pool is kind of diluted to the point where farming it is just silly, basically. Um, if you want to farm that sort of thing, you absolutely can, and it will be good all the way to level 100, but, um, yeah, I'm not doing it this time. So, Shaman and probably Nightblade being the only two where it's really not worth even attempting that farm, so we're going to be missing out on, well, probably going to be missing out on a very nice proc, but, uh, the world will go on, and we will be fine. So we're just going to hack our way through here. There is some loot hidden in the walls in this section, and uh, I'm not sure why, but I never really bother to get it. Um, I generally like both showing on the video and also uh, opening the boxes, because loot, uh, in spite of the fact that I will constantly tell you there's never anything good in these boxes, I do generally enjoy opening them, but that one, for some reason, I almost never get. Alright, we are standing in poison here, which is not ideal. Um, also, there's a lot of little things we can kill off before we worry too much about the bigger ones. There we go. One down, and two down. There we go. So, continuing the theme from last episode, I'm going to be focusing on items that have health regeneration on them. We'll be looking for rings uh, similar to this one. Um, gold bands are better bases than copper bands, which are better than other bases. Uh, but something like this is good. You get lifesteal and regen, and uh, the slith ring also is quite good. So we'll be focusing on regen. And uh, that brings me to a, I won't say a mistake, but, uh, but something I'm going to change from last episode where I said we would be going for the eel as our blue devotion. We're not, we're going for the lizard. Uh, the lizard, at least early, it may, may uh, well, it probably will swap to the eel later, but the lizard is very nice early on for the regen buffs that it provides. Later on, the, the buffs are kind of small and they stack with your gear and they're kind of not worth so much later, but early on they're quite good. Okay, level 13, so we're going to put one in the bar and two in torrent, I believe, but I will have a look once I'm kind of a little more safe, shall we say. Okay, there we go. Uh, yep, one in the bar, two in torrent. I'm going to max out torrent now. Um, torrent is really, really nice. This is a little worrying, though. Okay, this corrupted guy is going to go. The Corrupted Ones put that uh, green goop on the ground, and they are responsible for a lot of deaths. <laughs> so I'm just going to dodge around here, get some health back, and ideally, 
I would kill the regenerator first. However, I think we kill his friend first. And then we'll take him out last. There we go. Um, Stormcaller's Circlet its a decent hat for lightning damage, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, in this playthrough, I will be using blue items that I find. Um, this is not going to be a, a hardcore guide where I'm completely worried about every item that everyone could get, so I'm going to be using blue items, um, including both of these, I think. And uh, you should do the same to get there. Did I just see a rare ring? I did. What are you? Subjugators, no. <laughs> and early on, um, percent damage rolls on your gear is not really something that you should care about. 6% is not very much, shall we say. Okay, so Veloth also similar to the uh, the Shambler boss. Uh, Veloth's Sunder is kind of like, yeah, you can avoid it, but it's not a big deal. Because the damage you take while you are sundered is very minimal. So for example, I'll stand in this one. And watch as she absolutely destroys me. Uh, you can see there, I didn't take that much damage while sundered. So, ooh, hello. Alright, so formidable, formidable is one of the affixes of all time. Um, unlike the meme though, it's actually one of the better affixes in the game. Um, Dominators also has physical resistance on it, so in spite of that being a pet item, I will absolutely be using those um, as soon as I can pick them up. What are you? You're the Formidable Gloves. So in the current version of the game, uh, Formidable has 4% physical resistance. Depending on when you're watching this video, Formidable may not have that anymore. Uh, in the current testing patch, a lot of items that currently have physical resistance no longer do and a lot of places where you could get physical resistance before either no longer have it or it is vastly reduced. Uh, gold band, six regen. We get some pet stuff. No, we're not doing pets. We're not doing pets. Okay. Um, ch -ch -ch, you know what? I like the physical resistance because if you look on the third page, I've got 4%. This would take us to 9%. Um... That is a lot of movement speed to lose, though. I think I will swap it, um, and then once I get to 14, so like next 10 monsters I kill, <laughs> I'll swap in the final march, and that'll be fine. Um, I guess I kind of should put a point in Wind Devils if I'm going to wear that hat, but that's fine. All right, what else we got here? I picked up a Veloth's Ring, Resistant of Blood, and not so interested in that. So I think... We just uh, pick up what we can and be on our way. Now, I do have two Devotion Points to spend. So this one here, we're getting a bunch of bleeding damage. This does actually apply to our Primal Strike. Um, and we'll get some bleed resistant cunning here. But um, if you have a look at... Actually, let's show it in here. If you have a look at Primal Strike itself, it does 237% of main hand damage. And then Torrent does 29% of main hand damage. And if you... Where are we? Devotions. Any flat damage, so that 54 bleeding damage, is added onto your weapon when you hit things. So in the case of Primal Strike, we are now doing... Well, we were already doing bleeding damage because it's on the skill. But instead of 304, now we're going to be doing 300 and... What is it? An extra 60 or something? Uh, where are we? Yeah, about 360. So it's a nice little damage buff. The bleeding damage at low level is kind of relevant, um, but it's not something we'll be boosting, so later on we'll be swapping out of the fox. Um, that's a lot of regen. Yeah, we're going to use that. Definitely didn't mean to sell that. Um, so this being a weapon damage... Uh, spell, you do want to keep your weapon up to date, um, even to the point where if you find a good weapon, it's probably worth it to buy it, but um, having said that, early on you don't have tons of money, so we'll leave that. Also, something something didn't find a better weapon anyway. 
All right, let's go inside the prison. We can talk to Bourbon here. I think I haven't spoke to Sardina up the back yet for my free 100 XP. Um, hopefully between the two of those, I might get this level 14. Uh, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> um, good thing about having this extra bag, which came from turning in the quest for killing the Slith in the underground, um, the good thing about that is we now have an extra bag here. So I can dump all the stuff that I'm going to use later, I, I swear, I promise. Um, I can put that in there and it's not kind of in the way. Okay, so almost level 14. Um, let's head on down to Burrich. Now, end of last episode, I was just poking my head out of the tunnel. Um, this tunnel. And it's time to go and rescue Angra. Um, do I have the quest? I do not yet. Okay. I will find Angra. No problems. But first, there's a whole bunch of goblins that need to get whacked. And this is something that's going to continue throughout the rest of the game as well. The goblins have healers, and the healers have to die. Because as soon as there's something with more than three hit points to rub together, see that little uh, that lightning there? This guy right here, the witch doctor, he's buffing and or healing all his friends, and uh, and I don't like that. Uh, one more point in the bar, and two more in torrent. And we'll leave primal strike around 10 for now. Um, honestly, probably should be around 8, but it's fine. More damage just means uses more energy. Alright, that star on the map you can see, that's Angrim. Um, and we're gonna go rescue him. Now, which side you take in this doesn't really matter in, uh, in normal. So, when you do this quest on normal or veteran, if you side with Angrim here, um, you just get a blacksmith, and the benefit of siding with him is you don't have to run back to a place that you were kind of already gonna go anyway and turn it in. If you side with Duncan, you have to do a little bit more running around, but you also get more XP. So I am actually going to side with Duncan um, as soon as I chuck these on. Um, actually, do I want that hat? Downgrade in armor. The energy regen is nice. I'm going to keep the hat because um, Warden Krieg is a thing. Um, ectoplasm, chuck that on there as well. So ectoplasm is just more energy. Really good to have on an energy hungry build like this. Um, that'll do us for now. Okay, so... Where are we? It's time the hammer was passed on. Side with Duncan. Thank you, we will do great things. Uh, I'm gonna leave that, that totem right there. I am a little bit scared of low level totems. Um, and if you want to know why, go watch the one I did at the start of this episode. Okay, and we will see him next time we go back to town and pick up our extra XP. Right, um, what are we looking at here? Wind Devil. I don't want to get Wind Devil until I have the uh, Raging Tempest node right here. The Wind Devils themselves are absolutely obnoxious to play with. Um, every four seconds you can summon a new one. You have to summon a new one every 18 seconds. If all you want is the um, the resistance reduction, I'm gonna try and put it off. Maybe not as long as I can, but I am gonna put it off for a little while, just to save me from having to push the button. Don't mind having extra buttons, but something like that where you you kind of have to maintain it is not great. Okay, so working through the burial cave here, uh, you don't actually have to fight this stuff. You can come in the back door, um, giggity, and just kind of run in, grab the devotion shrine and leave. Um, I'm just kind of getting a little bit of XP here for no reason at all. Also, I do like the Aether Clusters. Um, you can never have enough of these things. But you absolutely don't have to clear this cave out or anything. In fact, I probably shouldn't be. However, Aether Crystals. 
Normally, if someone has this much of an addiction to crystals, you consider calling the police and maybe locking your doors extra tight, but it's fine, it's fine. All right, let's get out of here. So I've got another devotion point there, and this is going to finish the fox. Um, as soon as I can spend it without getting hit. Okay, devotion point. Last one goes into the fox. Now the fox provides five green, and we have a sixth green from here on the crossroads. We're heading towards the kraken, we only need five green. The widow needs six, but... We're getting the Kraken first, so we can probably take this point, if I can move the screen, take this point out of the crossroads here and put it into blue and get a little bit of a jump start on the lizard here. It's actually not going to make that big of a difference, so I'm not going to go back to town and do it now. But uh, you definitely want to be as greedy as you can with your devotions. You only get 55 of them. And it's basically like a third class. So, moving through the Birch outskirts here, there's two, three, I guess, things that you are kind of interested in here. The first one is the other way, so behind me, and is going to be uh, Steven Seagal, who has been stranded out here with nowhere to go. Um, somehow not dying to all of these goblins and wasps from hell and all the rest of it. Um, but, you know, he's Steven Seagal, so we can kind of forgive that. Okay, this guy right here. Um, generally, I, I avoid him because of all the lightning he puts everywhere. It's kind of silly damage. Um, but we also have kind of silly damage. I think we can kill him. It's looking good until he put all that lightning there. Now I'm not loving the, the lightning he puts on the floor, but I think I've got him. There he goes. Squire's Greaves um, may end up making a pair of those at some point. They're actually pretty good. I'm, I yeah, probably won't, let's be honest, but they are pretty good. And this would be quite nice if we were playing a caster. The rest of this, it's all going to get turned into, um, into iron bits. Okay. I don't have any armor on my belt, so I'm going to fix that now. I do have a few of these, and I'm keeping this one for when we find the Inventor's Apprentice, because I'm going to get her to take those off. Okay, tell him about the prison, and there's Stephen Skull. Send him back to town. And he's in charge of cooking dinner and repelling invasions. Next up, we've got the village. Uh, I will be back for the rest of the things I was talking about. I'm interested in this area. Um, however, the village is both right here and also has a rift gate. And this is a good time to explain the difference between normal difficulty and veteran, because this is a very clear and very kind of obvious in your face difference. If I was just playing on normal difficulty, I would get to this portal, I would walk up to it, it would summon three waves, and the third wave would have exactly one hero in it, pretty much every time. Being on Veteran, it generally has three. Uh, it doesn't always have three, I have had only two before, so we'll see exactly how many it has, but it's going to be more than the standard one from normal. And this fight can actually be a little bit dangerous. <laughs> What are the odds? All right, we've only got one. And uh, what I was saying about this being dangerous, yeah, ignore that. When there's only one of them, this fight is not dangerous, even with the extra health and damage they get from being on veteran. Um, <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and eat my own words there. Uh, every time. As soon as you're recording something, you say it'll happen, and it definitely doesn't. Generally, you'll get three there. Um, I can't remember ever having only the one, but uh, I can't say that anymore. Okay, I picked up the cultist orders there, and that's going to start a quest when we get back to town. There'll be one of the town members we can go ahead and uh, electrocute. <laughs> Promise, guys, there's only going to be one. No, there's going to be three in this one, but normally there's only one in normal. <laughs> 
Oh boy. Well, can't wait to see the comments on that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna head up the coast here. Um, is this kind of... yeah, it is the coast. Why not? We'll call it the coast. I'm gonna head up here to the docks and we're going to find the fabric. Um, if you wait till later, you will actually get the quest to come here and then you don't have to look through all the boxes and find the fabric. Um, fortunately, once you've kind of done this a few times, you can pick the fabric boxes out. Um, I am checking known locations, so this should be one. There it is. Um, actually, another three of them didn't have it, so I'm guessing it's going to be inside the northmost building and also on the floor outside the northmost building. Uh, metal strong boxes are never the correct one. You always want a weathered crate, or sorry, a weathered uh, chest here. But not all weathered chests are going to have the fabric in them. It's only specific ones. I don't think that one there is one. Um, there is occasionally one over here. Um, I've now changed my mind. This is definitely going to have the fabric in it. Because there's no other options. <laughs> and then the last one is going to be inside this building against the back wall here right there. So there are only, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, maybe seven locations for this to spawn, and once you kind of remembered where they are, it becomes pretty easy to pick them up. Okay, this is something that I meant to talk about as well. So this has got 14% increased lightning damage, and our current belts have, or our current boots have zero. So if we just look at Primal Strike here, um, it does... 968 to 1527. Put this on. It's gone up, but not by very much. And that's why I kind of don't really care so much about percent bonuses in the early game. They just don't do very much. They're also kind of small. Um, what was that, 17%? i have a look in a sec. 14%. Uh, is a lot smaller than the bonuses you'll be getting later, which is 50%, 60%, all the way up to a couple hundred percent on some weapons. So they're much more valuable later, and early on they're definitely not, shall we say. Right, let's see if the door's blocked here. Uh, nope, we've got a nice clean run through. This could be blocked here and you have to go all the way around, and it's a pain in the backside. Fortunately, uh, not blocked today. So I can just uh, lay into this Devotion Shrine. There we go, Devotion Shrine has been cleansed. Uh, Glacial Ribbon of the Fox, I don't think I have one of those yet. This is another slot where you can get Mending, and it's another slot where I recommend getting Mending. Especially early, you get Mending on your rings, um, you can get it on your amulet, although there's other good things to get on your amulet as well, so maybe not. And on your rings, if you can get resistant of mending or something like that, can be good. Okay, let's get out of here. Now, in the next building, the, the warden's, uh, not his laboratory, it's his townhouse or whatever. Just here. We'll be going into the basement and there's a rift gate just in there. So once I get to that point, I will head back to town. Picked up a level at some point, didn't notice for almost an entire another level, so... That's going to be fun. Uh, two more points in Torrent. And one more point in the bar. Um, so next level we're going to be finishing Torrent. And that'll be maxed out. And then I think we'll be putting more points into Primal Strike. So this build is really good with choke points. Um, if you can get everything to bunch up and then just nuke it all at once, you can do tons of damage very, very easily, especially once we get the weapon that uh, should hopefully be this episode. Just grab these law notes as well. And in here, you have a whole bunch of bookshelves, which can be worth blowing up. Not today, unfortunately. Uh, often you can get law notes from those bookshelves, which is XP. I don't think all... yeah, not that one. 
I've killed, um, I learned this one just from playing a ton of characters and exploding this house with various spells that ended up killing those by accident, and then, oh look, another, another war note. Guess I'll take that. Okay, level 16, another point in the bar. We've unlocked level 20 stuff, and normally I'd say Wendigo Totem is decent. So every half a second this will kind of pulse an AoE around it, and it will heal you, and uh, I think it does a little bit of damage. Yeah, vitality damage. Um, this can be decent. 3% plus 60 every half second is not bad. Um, obviously, I'm not going to get it right now. And also, obviously, we have another skill point here. Now, 8 health regen and 15 constitutions, not bad. But this one here is another 16 health regen. And then this one with the 40% increase. You get all of these, which you can absolutely do this after you get the first shrine in uh, Act 2. You're going to have a decent amount of regen just from those. Okay, let's make a quick trip to town. I've got some quests to turn in. I've got a trader to kill. Um, and I've got some components to fetch back. Let's actually... So... Hang on. Let's get rid of those. And let's see how much this is going to cost. 148. Pretty sure it's worth it for that. How much for the belt? 170. Yeah, I think it's worth it for all of these. Um, what I was thinking was that uh, you can buy components. So let's see if there's one of those that I've just bought. There is not. Um, I am going to check for mending ribbons, which he doesn't have, and also gold rings of mending. Okay, 29 health regen per second is pretty hard to say no to. For only 1,700. I think I'll have that. And I did just lose 5% attack damage converted to health, which is not the best deal ever. Um, also, this doesn't have any resistances at all, so I will end up replacing that at some point. But for now, um, I just want to... Um, I just want the regen. Flat regen. Uh, if I could get Vigorous of Mending, that looks pretty good to me. 4,000 gold. Eek. That kind of hurts. So health regen's up to 100 a second. So basically 5% health regenerated every second, constantly, forever, without me having to do a thing. So that's pretty good, in my opinion. Let's get those back, even though I'm not planning on ever using them, except maybe in crafting. Uh, right, let's head inside here, and we've got, like I said, a traitor to deal with. Now, you can make a deal with him, and, uh, you can, you know, have him explain himself. I'm just gonna kill him. This will save me a fight later, um, but there's an area that it will now be a little more difficult to access. But I don't need any items from in there anyway, so I kind of just don't care. I do settled in and later old timer. All right. As long as we're here, I am going to go and take that point out of the uh, green crossroads. What do you need? Is this enough? Thank you very much. Lovely jubbly. Let's chuck that over there. Let me clear your mind. So, uh, one point out of green here. And then we're going to put it into the eel, get some more regen. And the constitution is kind of a dead stat in the game now. It's not really relevant anymore. What's with item? Okay, so Dureni's dead, and we picked up a Blood of Jathon. We've got some reputation and also a bunch of iron, so we're pretty happy about that. And now we have agreed to end the Warden's life. Before we do that, however, uh, let's go back to... that's the wrong rift. I want to go back to the village. The Birch Village Rift, and we're going to be going backwards a little bit here. Because I still have this quest to kill Balros and Hagra, and if I don't do it, it's going to sit there forever and bug the hell out of me. So I'm going to go get rid of it, um, just so I don't have to look at that. Also, there's a pretty good chance that the road is going to be blocked here, and I'll have to double back. Yep, there we go. So let's bash a hole in the wall here. 
take care of some of these goblins. That's not something I'm going to use, but it is something I'm going to sell. Alright, actually, let's see if... Uh... Actually, you know what? Um, so right here, there can occasionally be a cave. I think it's a 1 in 3 chance if it's going to be there or in the two other places it spawns. It always exists somewhere in the world. Uh, and inside it is a bit of a... You could almost call him a super boss for this stage of the game, but let's let's call him a hidden secret boss. And um, he can be a little bit a little bit dangerous at this point in the game. So I'm kind of glad he's not there. Looks like uh, Hagra the Tormented is off fighting someone else, which I'm okay with because it means I get to beat down her friend over here alone, or at least you know, semi alone. And that eyeball got too close, so he gets zapped as well. Very nice. That's a gold band of mending with also having a prefix on it. Let's have a look at that one. What are you crushing? Okay. It's not amazing, but it's a little bit of extra damage. I'll take it. Do I have another diamond? I do. I'll chuck that on there. Um, actually, I am going to put five points in spirit. I think the energy is kind of under control at the moment, but I'd like to keep it under control, and we're going to be putting more points in Primal Strike here in a little bit, so it's definitely worth getting a little bit of spirit. Also, because we're doing magical, i.e. non-physical damage, uh, spirit actually uh, gives us damage as well. Okay. So we've got a whole bunch of loot out of this, and we're done here, so let's just... Uh, Let's just leave, and that goblin can be left wondering where we went. Okay, the Warden's Cellar is home to quite possibly the most dangerous totem in the game. Um, I probably could kill it, but it is a risk, and I am playing hardcore, so I'm going to skip it. Um, sorry about that for anyone who wanted to see the character die in Act 1. <laughs> but um, there really isn't much to gain from fighting the most dangerous totem in the game. And uh, there's a lot potentially to lose. So uh, I'm just not going to. If you want to fight it, uh, feel free, but just be aware that uh, there's a very good chance that it's going to kill you. So Razorback here has a set of shoulder pads that uh, he didn't drop this time, unfortunately. Um, the Razor, Razor Spine Mantle, I think it's called. Um, pretty good retaliation shoulders, but uh, not great for this build. Although it might be alright, it's probably going to have more armor than our current pair, which I think are, uh, yeah, still Isaacs. Okay, these bugs are super annoying. My poison res, nowhere near enough. Okay. Having said that, I am level 16, so uh, let's, let's go fix that, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, why not? Um, back to Devil's Crossing. I do actually have a blacksmith available now. Um, let's turn this in as well. We may as well get 17. Okay. Um, I think we'll go one point in Wendigo Totem. I did just lose some lifesteal from taking that ring off. And then we'll get two in Primal Strike. And I'm going to put Wendigo Totem on my right click here. And one point in Spirit. So I'm just getting five here. And that'll be it. So I'm, I'm not going to put any more of that in. Um, what I am going to do, though, is check for a mending belt. Here we go. 24 plus physique as well. I'm going to buy that. And that's going to be my belt of choice. I just wasted a whole bunch of gold, didn't I? Yep. I bought myself a nice shiny new... Ah, <sighs> this clicks. <laughs> Nice shiny new jacket that I immediately sold back for pennies. Okay. So my good friend Duncan here can make you an anti-venom salve here. Now this is the only thing you put on your belt pretty much the whole way to level 100. Um, there are other options, but they are all bad. Don't use them. At least until level 70. Um, and even then, probably not. This has got everything we want. So that Anti-Venom Salve has got some resistances to something that matters. Uh, you can also use a very similar component 
like this one. So there's molten skin for fire, there's dense fur for cold, and there is a uh, rigid shell, I think it is, for lightning. All of which have a little bit of armor and their specific resistances. But elemental resistance is a thing which gives you all of them instead of just one. So generally I don't use those if I can help it. Uh, the anti-venom cell though is poison and acid, which is good. Uh, and this one also has some regeneration and some more armor. So now we're up to 145 a second, which is getting close to 10%. We're probably sitting 7 or 8% at the moment. Um, we could also put an anti-venom salve on any other armor slot we want. Um, and actually, I'm thinking about putting it in the glove slot. I don't think I have much in the way of other things to go there. But uh, I think we'll leave that until the end of Act 1. I'm going to do a bit of crafting at the end here, so let's just go kill Krieg. Um, but getting that little bit of extra poison resist is really useful. You can use that from level 15. As soon as you've rescued a blacksmith and you are level 15, you can put that on. And I probably recommend to do it as well. So the Warden Cellar doesn't really have much in the way of noteworthy things to do, aside from get through it and get to um, the other end. Um, I guess technically that shrine, or uh, that totem rather, being... I, I would say it's probably the most deadly totem in terms of total number of characters it's killed uh, in the whole game. There are other shrines that are more dangerous, but you kind of have to go out of your way to find them. Whereas this one is on a path that you kind of have to take in an area that you definitely have to go through. So I would definitely say, in terms of total body count, that totem has the most. So up to you if you want to fight it, as I said. Um, definitely don't recommend it if you're not very confident in your build or your uh, piloting ability. I'm a bit of a potato at times, so <laughs> I'm not going to risk it. Oh, also, um, picking up the Wendigo totem here. So you'll see every half a second it's going to heal me, and it's also going to do vitality damage and a vitality damage over time effect. So you just chuck this down in the middle of a crowd. It's, it's still going to heal you for just half a percent. Um, so... Don't expect to get more healing if you hit more stuff with it, because it ain't going to happen. But, um, yeah, it's it's still pretty good, and it can provide a decent chunk of healing. Uh, nope. So we've got a scythe now, which is pretty nice. I probably will spec out of this, uh, this totem at some point, but uh, for now, it's providing a decent little bit of extra healing. Until we're getting you know, thousands of regeneration a second. At that point, I'll probably ditch it. But for now, we will hang on to it. Alright, here is the last Devotion Shrine in Act 1. When you click on this, you should have... Um, that's pretty good, actually. I'm going to put that on. Um, when you click on this shrine, you should have seven total points in your Devotions. So I have got seven unlocked here, which means I have picked up all of the Act 1 achievements, or all of the Act 1 Devotion Shrines. Unfortunately, it means I'm going to be one short here before uh, before fighting the Warden. Uh, so, Bane, I probably should put this on, actually. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put that on, and I guess i got to melt that to get my uh, Lodestone back. The damage on this early on doesn't matter that it's Acid. It just matters that it's heaps more, and uh, and attack speed as well. And what's that proc? 20% chance on attack that you hit things in front of you. I don't know if that can trigger from Primal Strike. I'm leaning towards it can't. So we'll just see. Although we already do plenty of AoE damage, so it'll be fine regardless. Having a nice weapon, especially just before a boss fight, really nice getting that upgrade. Everybody loves upgrades, right? Okay, that's got a star on it. Let's chuck the totem down. And pretty much everything we do life steals. 
because everything we do has weapon damage component, everything we do life steals, we regenerate tons. Um, it's just uh, you've got to not get overwhelmed, and that can be the hard part. Like this here, all of these things, when I kill them, they're going to be putting goop on the ground. This guy's got burning damage, defensive ability shred. Let's not stand in that here for a second. Just wait for the goop to go away. Ah, it's close enough. Alright, so after Act 1, I'm going to be putting more of a priority on resistances. And still a lot of priority on armor. But um, more priority on resistances, especially for certain certain resistances. Also, we are going to be taking a quick detour into Forgotten Gods. So we'll be skipping straight to Act 7. Um, just to get our weapon, and then we'll be back. You can actually do the entirety of Act 7 if you want. Or you can do the entirety of uh, Forgotten Gods if you want, straight out of Act 1. It is absolutely doable. Um, there's kind of not much in the way of benefit for doing it, but uh, you absolutely can. I guess there's, there's uh, a lot of Devotion Shrines, but realistically all it does is make you a little bit overleveled for um, the other content. Which technically does scale with your level a lot better now, so... Again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, one more point in the bar, I think, and two more in Primal Strike. If I can get to 19 before I get to Krieg, then I will have uh, maxed out Primal Strike to fight him with. I don't think I'm going to get there, though. Having said that, there is a lot of law notes in this area. Um, again, have a read. They're actually really good at setting up the, uh, the story, the atmosphere of the game. Highly recommend. You can kind of get a backstory on what's going on in this laboratory. Um, haven't read them for a while, actually. I probably should do that. But there's a little bit of history of what's going on, who the characters are, uh, and the characters in these lore notes are actually monsters that you will end up fighting as you go through here. Let's get out of that poison. Okay, Guardsman's Defender, I'm pretty sure, is a shield. So we won't be using that. Also planning on not crafting anything, at least for a little while, until I've got my components in order. Um, the Squire's Boots that we found earlier are pretty good. Although, if I could get my hands on the Explorer's Boots, that would be even better. Um, speaking of which, I should head into the spider section and pop that chest. Assuming it's there. Anyway. Looks like this particular door is a wall today. So I'll have to go around. Same with this second door that's actually a wall at the moment. Is that lightning jump through the walls? <laughs> Alright, so in this next corner, there should be... Oh, he's come out to see us. I was going to say there should be a boss, but... Um, yep, he's not in his usual assigned room. Let's kill off some of his friends and not stand in the fire. It's probably a good idea. Stand in fire, DPS higher. It's actually not a true thing. Okay, I'm going to run away from the fire. Not too far, but just... Far enough to not be standing in it. Also, a lot of the monsters in here, especially the ones that look like him, are going to be summoning extra stuff to fight. So, you can absolutely get bogged down in never any waves of reanimated zombies. Alright, I saw a formidable something there. Formidable helmet. That is a lot of extra armor and other stuff I like. I am actually going to use that and I'll have to melt that down later. Uh, what are you, Mystic of Psyche? No, thank you. I do want the, uh... Go away. do want my mana regen back, though, so I'm gonna have to melt all of this stuff down to get my components back. 
Uh, spending iron on that is definitely worth it. The uh, especially the ectoplasm is going to be quite useful early on, and later on you're going to have much more valuable components. Let's put an end to this little horde here as well. There's enough of them that it's probably worth spending the time to beat them down. Alright, that'll do. That'll do. It's most of them. This next little section can get a bit hectic as well. What you want to do is uh, clear out this room at least mostly. And there's going to be spawns coming out of the ground here in a second. There they are. I'm going to take those out as well. And then in the next room, there's going to be six Aether Crystals, and every single one of them will spawn a seemingly endless wave of zombies. So you want to take them out. There's also uh, the boss. Is it Sabrant here? We'll find out in a sec. I think it's Sabrant. Uh, another one of the characters from the lore notes. So take out the crystals, try and keep the horde under control. Then you need to take out the main big guy. Oh, this level 19, awesome. Let's just get over here and start working on him. Once we start beating on him, all of the little things that he revives should die to the lightning splash. And this is pretty much what uh, what the Warden fight is going to look like as well. So let's just have a quick look. Um, this one I want to use for the Aether Resistance, but do I actually want to use it? That is the question. Um, I think I do. My Aether Resist is not great, so let's chuck that on. Do I still have the Veloth Ring? I don't. should have kept that. Um, and I don't think any of this other stuff is going to have any Aether Resistance on it, so I think we go in like this. Um, actually, that's got Aether Resistance on it. Yeah, we'll check that one on. Okay, Aether Resist is up to 48%. The other type of damage he does is Bleeding, but if you just stay in his face, he kind of just doesn't use the Bleeding attack, so we can avoid that. Alright, let's go kill him. Uh, we have a lot of regeneration. We're up to 165. I'm pretty sure I shouldn't actually need to use a potion for him. I may need to for his stomps. But look at how the health bar just comes back without me using potions. I haven't even put the, uh, the totem down yet. If anything, we're going to have issues with energy more than anything else. All right, let's see your true form. I will demonstrate my true power. All right, here comes the stomp. This is the only thing I'm a little bit worried about for this fight, and it barely even scratched me. So I'm comfortable that I'm going to be able to stand here and just face tank everything. Again, the focus on regeneration just makes this boss a little bit of a joke. So you stack armor and a little bit of aether resistance to reduce the damage that's coming in. And then you run out of energy. <laughs> um, yeah, stack armor and um, aether resistance to reduce the incoming damage and stack regeneration to, um, to heal it all passively. A little bit of lifesteal. Rubs your father's brother. Okay, uh, let's check that one back on. Uh, my use for Milton's cask is now pretty much nothing until Act 3, where I may remember to come back and farm another one, but I probably won't, let's be real. Uh, it can be useful in Act 3. One-handed dagger, I'll sell that. Um, can be useful in Act 3 because of the ethereal damage from, well, from Act 3. All right, so the Warden is dead. And in spite of all my waffling, we've managed to kill him in... Where are we? An hour and 46. Jesus, that's slow. 
too much waffling. All right, uh, let's take our components back here. Um, I definitely want that add-on. The rest of these kind... Oh, a thousand. Keep that one. Uh, keep that one. I definitely want this one for 200. Absolutely. Um, do I care about that? 192, sure. All right, um, so I'm actually going to sell these ones. Because that's too expensive for those components. Right, uh, vendor fodder for everybody. And now we're going to go for a little bit of a run. Um, actually, before we do that, we should do some crafting. Right, so at the end of Act 1, there's a few things you need to do. The first thing you need to do before you do any other crafting is go and fix the bridge. All right, so this bridge over here costs you iron bits and scrap to repair. And until you repair this, you can't access Act 2. So if you, um, and I don't know anyone who's done this, definitely not me, I would never do something this silly. But if, for example, your friend, let's say, was playing this game and thought he was being very clever and was going to go into a whole bunch of crafting and get really nice components and happened to spend all of his scrap and most of his bits, then uh, then he, um, definitely not me, but, uh, but he might not be able to access Act 2. I might have to just kind of run around and farm the Warden's Quarters for bits and scrap and eventually manage to get in. But, um, you know, no one I know will do something like that. Alright, we want Wardstones times two. So this is a default recipe. Everyone can make these and the ingredients are fairly common. The cracked lodestones, if you've been putting tons of them on your weapons, um, you may need to buy a couple extras. You should not have been using the other ones, so two of those should be no big deal. The next thing you're going to want is a pair of scaled hides. Now, this one you often won't have enough for. So, for example, I'm missing bristly fur. However, you can craft bristly fur, but it does need polished emeralds and scavenged plating. So, again, you might be a little bit short. If you can only get one, it's fine. Just get one. And then the other one, if you type S-I-L into the bar, you need to make one resilient plating and then one silk swatch. Now you can, and I probably should, just looking at my resistances, you can make two of these and just use one scaled hide. That is also perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to go with two though, because we are going to get a bunch of bleeding from these wardstones. We're just short on piercing. Um, the rest of resistances are kind of okay, but not amazing. And then the last thing I'm going to come up to craft is equilibrium. Now you could go into act two straight away and get the, is it the ivory bone, bone talisman, I think it's called. Um, but that just gives you 5% to all of your stats and a skill that you have to push. And I never remember to push the button until I'm already out of mana. And so that basically just becomes, Hey, I'm out of mana. Here's a second potion. Um, Equilibrium is passive. You get elemental resistances, which I don't need at the moment. Uh, but you also get move speed. Spirit, which is energy and damage. Elemental damage, which we are doing. And when you get hit, you have a chance to stun and confuse things around you. So I really like this for early on, and I'll probably use this until uh, I get a lucky drop. Or, much more likely, until I get to Act 6. Ah, we speak at last. Okay, so just for a change, we're going into Forgotten Gods first. Now, there's a few things you need to do here. The first one is you need to pay attention to which one of the three witch cults you are joining. Uh, I'm going to recommend Salael, and it is entirely for this item right at the start. The emblem of the charging bull here. This is basically um, Vyas Might, uh, except... Obviously, you don't need to be an Oathkeeper to use it. The other good options are if you join Dreeg, you will get a Teleport. And if you join Bismail, uh, rest in peace. Actually, what does Bismail give you? I think it's the Shadow Strike one. So you could use the Shadow Strike one. Let's have a look. What do we got? Leap. Okay, so this is very similar. You jump to an area, don't need a target. 
and Shadowy Assassin is basically Shadow Strike, but uh, you don't need to be a Nightblade, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. I pick Salel just because I like the Rush ability more than I like the others, but it really is a preference thing. Um, going around now, picking up all of the um, all of the lore notes. Also going to check these. These have got twice as much armor as, as my old pants. Um, I guess I'm going to be wearing those at level 20. These also have a decent chunk of armor. Losing plus two to Heart of the Wild is going to hurt a little bit. Um, that which I've gone there as well. Um, unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to melt these again for my components. Um, but yeah, this is the Rift Stalker here. This is the better one for Drig, in my opinion. Charge, this is, uh, this is basically Blitz. Okay, and I think that's it. I'll be talking to the Saleil guys here in a minute, so I'm going to skip going and collecting their notes, and we'll come down here and do this little event. No, we won't. I didn't talk to the emissary, did I? Too busy talking about movement runes. So, the three go okay, we will agree to take his challenge. And let's head down here. Now, there is a little bit of a problem with this weapon, which uh, I'll get into here in a second. Let me just go ahead and beat these guys down. Um, but there is a period in time where I have noticed that farming for the um, the Corvin Halberd that we're going to be looking for is kind of a no-go. Uh, but I know that it drops at level 19, 20, and 21. After that, there appears to be a kind of a dead period where, um, where it just doesn't drop. And I've noticed this with the uh, the fire dagger for uh, for pets as well for skeletons. Come see what's right, left. Sell these, um, but there appears to be a level range in the mid twenties where those MIs just don't drop. And I know this drops at nineteen twenty um, and twenty one. Between twenty two, so twenty two to twenty six seems like the dead zone where they don't drop. Um, I might have just been very unlucky though. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be joining Salel. So we are now friendly with Salel, which means we can come back down here. Keep the lore note. Come see what's left. And I'm going to buy, let's say, four of these. Well spent. Chuck that on your metal. If you don't have a metal, go buy one. And now we can, we can kind of dash around. Alright, one last quick stop before we go and start the farming process. Um... I need this back. And do I have pants to replace this? Not really. Okay, we're nearly 20. I'm gonna have to come back at 20 because I have much better gear available. Anyway. I'm actually not going to pick up any of the quests here. And the reason for that is because we're not actually here to do quests. We are here to get a weapon and then head back to Act 2 and we will come back and do Forgotten Gods later. So. We do now have Rush, or Riftstalk, or whichever one you ended up getting. Doesn't really matter. Whatever your preference is, they will all do the same job. One thing to note, though, is that Forgotten Gods, um, specifically the whole expansion section, is considerably more difficult than Act 2. So this is supposed to be Act 7. This is supposed to be the last thing you do. You can skip to it, but... Be aware, it is going to be a little more difficult than what you are used to. Just trying to get to level 20 so I can get the better gear, basically. For this entire run out to the Temple of Osir, uh, you don't have to kill anything. You can just walk the whole way, ignore everything, don't kill anything, and you will be fine. So I'm literally only killing these things because I want level 20. If I didn't need, or if I didn't have level 20 this close, I would just be ignoring these and walking straight through the entire area. Killing nothing, earning no XP, 
and it would be fine. So you can absolutely just walk through just like this. And you'll be fine. There's level 20. Okay, I don't need to kill anything anymore. However, I do want to go and swap those components and items over. Um, these blue pants are absolutely what I'm going to use. Uh, if I wasn't using these blue pants, I would have used the green ones that I had dropped just previous. Uh, so if you don't have blue weapons or uh, blue pants, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, and this has considerably more armor and decent resistances as well. So I'm going to put that one on. Um, I probably should talk about armor absorption here. I think I already discussed the armor absorption percentage, but that's basically what these scaled hides are for. So instead of having 30% of all physical damage ignore my armor, now it's only 16%. And once I chuck this on, it should be down to 2% from memory. Yep, so only 2% of physical damage ignores my armor now, which uh, I like having armor that works. Right, so now that we've picked up extra armor and such, um, let's go back to ignoring everything and just running past it. So at this point in the game, you want to be either 19, 20, or 21. Um, if you happen to be 22 and trying this, let me know if it drops, because uh, I'll be honest, I kind of stopped trying. Um, I'm going to get Oak Skin online next. Um, I stopped trying at 21, so I know 19, 20, and 21, this works. And I know there is a dead zone for a lot of MIs in this area between uh, somewhere in the low 20s and up to 27 where they start dropping again. I'm not sure why that happens. I'm not sure if it's actually a thing or if I'm just super unlucky, but it's definitely something I've noticed with multiple monster and frequents from this expansion now. I just want the law note. Let me get the law note and I'll be on my way. You should have just let me have the law note. Nobody had to die. So we're pretty much just walking straight through this. Don't need any trouble. Let's start no trouble. There won't be no trouble. There we go. This is the gate we want. And this is going to be a little bit cheesy, but we're going to do it anyway. So, in my testing... Most of the enemies we are going to be facing in here are not going to have the halberd. This one by the door is almost always going to stand up and have a red halberd, uh, but it has, like now, sometimes got this little glowy silver one, which means I got my weapon on the first thing. Because if it's silver, it will drop, um, because it has the it has to have the item in order for it to be silver. So I got mine already, and it's skyfallen. Oh my god. Skyfallen of Thunder, the only one better than that would be a Skyfallen of Alacrity. Um, or is it Mage Storm? I don't know. That's really good. I'm really happy with that. I will be using that once I get to level 24. However, if you're not giga lucky like I was and you don't get it on this one, there's a couple of ways I found to do it. The first way, don't come this way. Um, this one is almost always a statue and doesn't stand up. But you basically, you walk through here, and you're looking for... Don't fight anything. You're looking for um, these watchers, who are, I think, actually back here. Um, but you're looking for the statues. These will often be laying on the floor in pieces. And when you run near them, they will stand up, and then their weapon will start to glow. And 95% of the time, the weapons will be red. Um, so like this one here, he's going to stand up, red weapon. Ignore it, don't fight it. These guys here, the animated keepers, um, you can fight them if they have the white weapons and otherwise ignore them. And you basically work your way through here. There are set places where these things exist. This one, I don't know why, it never stands up. This one is often a pile on the floor as well. Uh, but there are set places where these statues exist and... They are what you want to be running to. Uh, you don't need to kill anything else. And as you can see, with the amount of regen we have, you can more or less just ignore stuff. This corridor here, especially at the top here, you can often, like now, have uh, a couple of monsters actually with stars. 
Um, I've had a pack of three followed by another pack of two right behind them. So do be careful of this corridor here. It can be quite dangerous. And you can come around the back here. This guy's got a fire one again. And that's it. So that's the first floor. If we go down to the second floor, and note that I'm not killing anything here. I'm just literally walking past everything and checking the statues for the lightning weapon. How about you? What do you got? You got fire. No good to me. That's blocked, so we move on. These guys, the animated watchers, they can have it. Um, I think I've had one of them in all of the time I've been farming these on three different characters now. Only one time I think I've seen one of those that had it, but they can have it, so do check. Just checking the weapons. You'll see it. It, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, probably should clean that shrine, actually, since I'm here. Uh, there's two more to check just up here, so actually just the one this time. Alright, so... Typically, it's been taking me between two or three full runs of this uh, temple in order to get the weapon. Now, like I said, I got super ridiculously lucky here. Um, also note that if you are going to stand and fight any of this stuff, they do shred resistances. They do stack a ton of damage over time effects on you. So if your health starts dropping, make sure you run away and do not fight if you don't have a potion available. Um, let's go ahead and clean this shrine off, actually. So nice and reflective, which is not what I wanted to see. Okay, we might be able to just beat him down. You're going to notice as soon as he gets a little bit spiky... Um, he apparently didn't get spiky, but you'll you'll see piles of effects stack up when they're reflecting things back to you. Alright, picked up the Devotion Shrine there. Um, and then you exit to the main menu. Start back up, and you teleport back to the Temple of Ostia. And you just do it again. Now, like I said, I got really, really lucky with that weapon. Uh, that one is going to do me... Probably until 40-something, and then I'll come back here and do this again. Um, the temple, I believe, scales up to either 80 or 100, something like that. Um, no white weapon, so I ignore him. I guess it's more of a blue, really. Uh, this is a statue. This one is almost always a statue. But uh, now we run through here. Check these guys. They don't have it. That's blocked off. So we head back. And these are all in set locations, so if you just memorize the locations, then uh, you'll know exactly where to go. And we can just run past everything that isn't the monster we want. You can fight all this stuff for sure. Um, it's going to really increase the amount of time you spend farming this, but you can do it. I'm going to recommend not, but uh, you absolutely can fight all this stuff. It's good XP for sure. What's this guy? Animated Preserver. There's his weapon. Okay, and this guy is almost always a uh, an enemy waiting to reanimate. But yeah, you get the idea. This is how you do it. And yes, it is going to take you probably three runs through both levels to just get one of these weapons. Um, but it's definitely doable. As long as you keep moving, the damage from all of this stuff should be minimal. But you have to keep moving. You can't stop and take a swing at every little thing. Um, looks like there's no more this way. You also... You don't need, need to have the movement skill, but they will clog up doors, and having the movement skill is a really good way to get through doors that are blocked by a horde of enemies. I'm gonna check this way. 
this guy seems like he's pretty much always a uh, an enemy with a chance at the weapon. So him being right next to the door you kind of have to go through is a good thing. What else we got down here? More of these watches. Unfortunately, like most of the time, they don't seem to have the weapon. They definitely can have it though, so it is worth checking. And there's three of them there. Pretty much every game. Uh, I did not test with uh, Bismil. So Bismil has a quest that takes you into this temple and spawns in, um, I think they're like Watchers of Erolin or something. Um, and I'm not sure if they have a chance to have the weapon. But uh, it's a definite maybe. Alright, uh, I've already got my weapon, so I'm going to... I'm going to stop running around now and head back to uh, Act 2. But this is how you do it. And yes, like I said, it's going to take you maybe 10 minutes, maybe half an hour. But the weapon is definitely worth it. Um, let's actually go back to Act 1. And, uh, and I'll show you what I mean here. So, first off, if I just mouse over this, it's plus 2,000 DPS if equipped. Um, it's actually way more than that because... Mine is Skyfallen, which means it's plus 8 to Primal Strike, not plus 4. It comes with plus 4 just for being a Corvin Storm Halberd, and then the Skyfallen prefix is adding another plus 4. So this is going to destroy my energy, but it's also going to destroy anything that I look at. Um, the Of Thunder, again, I would prefer Of Alacrity, but um, I'm really happy with this weapon. This will do me, like I said, until probably mid-40s, maybe even up to 60 but um, whatever you get first, your level 20 weapon, you're going to use it for an hour or two, and then you'll be level 40. So just whatever drops first, take that, be on your way, you'll be fine. Um, if you happen to get, you know, um, what even is the lightning prefix? It's just magic. I can't even think. But if you just get, you know, thunderous Corvin Storm Halberd of Thunder... Or, uh, or whatever it is, it's fine. Just take it. If you happen to get a physical prefix, don't worry about it. It's fine. Just take it. Um, you're spending more time farming for the for the weapon than you'll actually end up using it for. It's when you start getting up towards level 80 or even 100, that's when you want to put a little bit more time into this. Um, let's actually see. <laughs> it's bothering me that I can't remember the name of the prefix for... For lightning charged there we go so if you get a if you get a charged corvin storm halberd of thunder that's fine if you get skyfallen corvin storm halberd of alacrity then you know great job you got the best one but this is fine i'm happy with this i'm going to use this even though i can't use it for four levels it's it's going to be grand so i'm going to end this episode here um when we come back we'll start with act two so thank you all very much for watching. See you in the next one. And goodbye for now.